Let's do a couple of examples of substitution involving special functions, trig functions, exponential, stuff like that. It'll actually be the sort of thing that uh, we've actually have looked at these types of problems before. And we've kind of been able to come up with antiderivatives by ad hoc methods just by looking at it. Let's actually do a little bit more rigorously here. So let's say I ask you to find the indefinite integral, the antiderivative of sine of 7 theta plus 5. So it's very suggestive that we should be thinking of u as 7 theta plus 5. So that means du is equal to 7 uh, d theta. We, don't, we only have d theta. We don't have a 7 d theta. So that means du over 7 is d theta. So we can go ahead and make that replacement here. Replace d theta with du over 7. And so what do we end up with? sine of u times 1 7th du. And so now we've got 1 7th, and I think we know that the antiderivative of sine of u is minus cosine of u. And of course we have one last step, which is to replace u with the original variable. So u is 7 theta plus 5. So don't forget that little step at the end. So back, in, uh, back when we originally did antiderivatives, I think we, we did problems of this sort, which we just were kind of able to come up with just by looking at, you know, reverse engineering what's going on. This gives a substitution, gives a more systematic approach to doing it. Uh, similarly, let's do an example involving an exponential function e to the minus 9t dt. I think that, again, we kind of saw how to reverse engineer this, but we don't want to reverse engineer. We want to do a little bit more systematically with substitution. Our natural choice, u is equal to minus 9t. So du is equal to minus 9 dt, or du divided by minus 9 is dt. So we'll substitute that in for dt. So what do we have? e to the u times minus one ninth du. Integral of e to the u, of course, is just e to the u. And the final step is, of course, minus replace that u with minus 9t. And there is our final answer. Of course, in both of these, we can and should think about just checking. You know, if you take the derivative of this, Multiply by minus 9, so you just get e to the minus 9t, what we started with. And similarly, take the derivative of this, you get back up to the integral of 7, uh, you get back up to 7 sine, sine, or sorry, sine of 7 theta plus 5. Once again, when you're finding antiderivatives in some sense, we should never be wrong, because we can always check our work. Okay, so those are a couple problems we're using substitution to do things that we, we've already done. Let's do something here that is a problem type we haven't thought about before. So let's say that I ask you, what is the antiderivative of tangent theta d theta? So a, a, a moment's thought says, it's like, well, okay, uh, using our... Uh, rules that we know about derivatives, there's no derivatives, no functions that we can think of off the top of our heads whose, and whose derivative is tangent theta. Like we, we know that the derivative of tangent theta is secant squared theta. We know the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta. But nothing from our bank of what we know has derivative tangent theta. So that doesn't work. So we'd like to use substitution. If we just leave it this way, it's probably not apparent how we're going to substitute. But think about how we might rewrite this. So our method for rewriting this is, well, tangent theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta. So now we're asking for what's the integral of sine theta over cosine theta. And so now this becomes much more suggestive of how to tackle this because, well, you know, maybe this could be our choice for 
de theta, uh, de u here, maybe cosine theta could be u. Let's, let's explore that option. If u is equal to cosine theta, then du is equal to minus sine theta d theta. Hey, minus du is equal to sine theta d theta, which is exactly what I circled there in green. So what does this yield? So we end up with minus 1 over u du. And that is, of course, minus u to the minus 1 du, that integral is natural log of the absolute value of u, plus our constant. So let's finish this off. Uh, minus log of plug in what is u, cosine of theta. So there is an answer, an alternative method for, right, so this is a perfectly fine final answer. An alternative method for doing this would be, writing this would be, we can move that minus one exponent upstairs to say this, hey, this is actually natural log of cosine theta, absolute value that to the minus one. And we could write it as natural log of secant theta, absolute value of that plus c. And so all of these are equivalent answers here. Okay, so uh, again, uh, it, it's an interesting exercise to check to see that the, if you take the derivative of this, you do get back to uh, tangent theta. Let's, let's, let's verify that real quick. In the interest of simplicity, I'm going to drop the absolute value here. But if we take the derivative respect to theta of natural log of secant theta plus c, so that's going to be, so the derivative of natural log secant theta, so divide by secant theta and multiply upstairs by, upstairs goes the derivative of secant theta, which is secant theta tangent theta, plus c, the derivative of that is of course plus zero. Two factors of secant theta cancel out and sure enough, we are back to tangent theta. So everything is on the up and up. So that is a way to drive the um, drive the uh, formula for the integral of tangent theta. And I'll end this video just by noting that you can integrate uh, cotangent, oops, not cosine, but cotangent theta. You integrate cotangent theta, you end up with the natural log of the absolute value is sine theta plus c.